There are so many places you can find fungi. Some places you expect, others you don't. Most of the time, we are blind to them. Some can only be seen through a microscope, while others, they grow very huge. Therefore, you can see them with your naked eye. Fungi are like invisible ecosystem engineers. So they are very, very important, especially now with climate crisis, they can help us solve the problem. Hello, I'm Amy Chong from the Department of Biological Sciences, National University of Singapore. I'm a senior lecturer there and I teach mycology and botany. Mycology is the study of fungi. It can be the applications like medicinal purposes, micro-remediation, or their interaction with other organisms, be it plant, insect, animal. So we often think about fungi as food or decomposers, but there are actually many, many other uses for fungi. Fungi can be medicine. Fungi also sequester carbon in the soil. They can also be alternative materials. Okay, this one, can you see? It has a stalk. This one, scientific name is Sanguinoderma rugosum. In Chinese, it's called Yunzi. They have pores underneath and then they also release spores. So, a lot of spores come off. Okay, so we see this piece of tree trunk. Uh, it's been cut because probably it was leaning and it was already rotting. So you see that it's got different kind of fungi growing. Okay, this one likely is a mycenaceae. So you can see there's a cap and then so we have to look at the gills underneath. So this one actually can glow. At night, if you come here, you can see that they produce the green light. Here's another different fungus. Now this one looks different. This one is not like the Ganoderma, not like the mushroom before. This one is this one. Auriculariaceae. They grow flat and then they produce all these hair-like structures. It's the same group as your hay mold. So sometimes when we walk around, other than seeing fungi, you might see slime molds. So this one is called Ceratio mixa fruticolosa. Yeah, it's a, it's a mouthful. <laughs> um, these are slime molds, so these, they are in the spore bearing stage. So at one time, they were considered under the fungi kingdom because of the spores, but now they are their own group under the mixomycetes. So here is another fungus. Um, this one is just a fruiting body. So when you see a fruiting body, it's just one small part of all the growth that's already inside the wood. This is when they want to reproduce. Fungi are part of our natural heritage. The forest, when the trees die, the fungi will break them down. We can find fungi everywhere. Anywhere there's a bit of moisture. We are breathing in spores right now. They are in the air. They are on the leaves, on the bark, inside the tree. They are below ground. So they are everywhere, literally. What are the do's and don'ts when we encounter fungi? If you are not familiar, don't touch. Uh, because there may be some that are potentially uh, very toxic. Uh, you cannot collect because you need a permit from National Parks Board in order to collect. What you can do is to admire them and take photographs. What are some very unique fungi? They may not look like fungus. Uh, what we think are fungi would be like, you know, the, the cap and the stalk, but a lot of them don't really look like that. For instance, the puff ball, they look like a ball. Then you've got earth stars that shoot out the spores when the raindrops fall on them. Then the diverse colours, wow, so amazing. Got orange, yellow, white of course, and not only that, shapes and size. So they are really quite fantastic. Okay, the truth is, we know very little about fungi locally. 
We don't know what we have here. We don't know what are their applications. There are very few researchers who are working on fungi in the environment. I think people will appreciate fungi more when they can recognize them, when they realize the usefulness of fungi. I hope there will be more people who will appreciate fungi, their diversity, their usefulness, and their potential in solving man-made problems. If you are interested to find out more about fungi, where can you get resources? Uh, internet, there are a lot of videos, um, a lot of write-up about different fungi. Then also you can uh, look for uh, NLB, uh, National Library Board Archive Talks, uh, given by me or by other people. If you are interested to read more, there's this book, A Guide to Macrofungi in Singapore. You can borrow this book from the National Library Board. So start with understanding the biology first, then you can go into viewing the fungus. So you can match your fungus to the pictures. So there are books out there you can borrow, you can find out more. The more you read, the more you understand them and when you are familiar with them, you can identify them. Thank you.